Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe type 1 and type 2 diabetes. You should then be able to describe how type 1 and type 2 diabetes are treated. OK, in the last few videos, we've been looking at how the pancreas regulates the concentration of glucose in the bloodstream, and we've seen the roles of the hormones insulin and glucagon. Now, in some people, the regulation of blood glucose concentration does not work effectively. In this case, blood glucose concentration can be excessively high. This condition is called diabetes mellitus. Over time, a high concentration of glucose in the blood can lead to damage to nerves and blood vessels. Now, there are two different types of diabetes. These are referred to as type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes. We're going to start by looking at type 1 diabetes. Type 1 diabetes is also called insulin-dependent diabetes. In people with type 1 diabetes, insulin is not produced by beta cells in the islets of Langerhans and the pancreas. Now, why this happens is not well understood. However, one possibility is that this is caused by an autoimmune response in which the person's immune system attacks their beta cells. Now, type 1 diabetes frequently develops in childhood, and the symptoms develop rapidly. These symptoms include a high concentration of glucose in the blood and the presence of glucose in the patient's urine. Patients can also experience excessive thirst and increased need to urinate. Now, there's no cure for type 1 diabetes. Patients with type 1 diabetes must regularly monitor their blood glucose concentration. To do this, they analyze a small sample of blood using a glucose monitor. Now, if the blood glucose concentration is too high, then the patient may experience hyperglycemia. Hyperglycemia can lead to unconsciousness, and if it's not treated, it can lead to death. So, if the blood glucose concentration is too high, the patient requires a dose of insulin. Now, insulin cannot be taken as a tablet. That's because insulin is a protein and would be digested to amino acids in the stomach. So, instead, insulin is injected, and the dose of insulin injected depends on the concentration of blood glucose. The insulin triggers target cells to absorb glucose from the blood and store it as glycogen. In other words, carry out glycogenesis. Now, sometimes the blood glucose concentration can fall too low. This is called hypoglycemia. And again, this can lead to unconsciousness. In this case, the person may choose to eat a small snack to increase their blood glucose concentration. OK, now type 2 diabetes is also called insulin-independent diabetes. In people with type 2 diabetes, there are two possible issues with glucose regulation. Firstly, insulin production can be insufficient. And secondly, the person's body cells can stop responding to the insulin present. Remember that insulin functions by binding to a glycoprotein receptor on the surface of target cells, for example in the liver and muscles. And we looked at that in a previous video. Now, in type 2 diabetes, there can be a lack of insulin receptors on the surface of cells or the insulin receptors that are present no longer function correctly. And this means that target cells no longer respond effectively to insulin. Because of this, absorption of glucose into target cells is reduced, so the concentration of glucose in the bloodstream is much higher than normal. Now, around 90% of people with diabetes have type 2 diabetes. The symptoms of type 2 diabetes are similar to type 1, but develop more slowly and often to a lesser extent. Now, type 2 diabetes is linked to being overweight, being physically inactive, and the overconsumption of refined carbohydrates. In the past, type 2 diabetes was diagnosed mainly in adults. However, type 2 diabetes is now also seen in children, and this could be linked with an increase in childhood obesity. Now, in the case of type 2 diabetes, we can regulate the blood glucose concentration with a combination of diet and exercise. Firstly, patients should consume a diet with relatively low levels of sugar and other refined carbohydrates. That's because refined carbohydrates can cause the blood glucose concentration to increase sharply. Secondly, patients should increase their physical activity. This balances the body's energy demand with the intake of carbohydrates. Patients with type 2 diabetes should also aim for a healthy body weight. 
Now, in some cases, patients with type 2 diabetes are treated with medications. This can include drugs which trigger the intestines to absorb glucose more slowly, as well as drugs to increase the production of insulin. And in some patients with type 2 diabetes, insulin injections may be required. Now, in the past, the insulin used by diabetics was extracted from the pancreas of cows and pigs. However, some patients became allergic to this, as it's not identical to human insulin. Now, human insulin is produced in genetically modified bacteria. Because this is human insulin, allergies are much less likely. It's also relatively cheap and can be made in large amounts. And lastly, this avoids the ethical or religious issues involved in using animal insulin. In the next video, we'll explore the use of stem cells as a potential treatment for diabetes.